good evening everybody first of all uh, so the topic will be like very interesting and it will be easy to understand topic so i made it very simple in terms of presentation as well the last session whenever i uh, when i took it was all about uh, building products with blockchain and kind of stuff is what i discussed so today it's going to be understanding the threat landscapes and where to be contribute where can we where can we start our a blockchain research if at all you want to become a blockchain researcher that's what we are going to discuss today well, the agenda is very simple. I'll quickly talk about what is blockchain, uh, why is it safe, the threat landscape, and then we, go, we will go on to the challenges. And finally, we will have a q and I need about 30 to 35 minutes for the entire discussion. Well, uh, we know what is blockchain, right? It's very simple. It's a distributed ledger. Uh, it's a method or a system, you can call it, for recording information, uh, which will certainly make it very, very difficult or impossible. Can I say like that? Yeah, I can. But there are some methods with which you can crack impossible to hack or change or cheat the system uh, so it is a digital ledger of transactions uh, which is duplicated and distributed across the entire network so please understand the point it is multiple blocks coming together and is a distributed ledger that's how we can call blockchain as now something looks like this when you talk about blockchain i can have three blocks here to explain you how exactly it looks like block, block one two and three Two is connected to one, three is connected to two, and this guy will know very well about this guy, and this guy will know very well about this guy, and the connect is there. So each of these blocks will have a hash allotted to it. You can see that there is a hash for block one, hash for block two, hash for block three as well. And the first block is called as a special block. It is called as Genesis block, and it will not have any previous hash data with it. It will be called as Genesis block. It is a special block. But the second block will have the previous block previous blocks hash very clearly mentioned one z eight f so these two are getting connected this way and the third block will have the hash of the second block so we are getting multiple blocks connected together in a safer efficient as well as uh, as well as a very uh, efficient way so uh, we call the first block as a genesis block remember it that's a very important content now, if you see what will be the content of each of these blocks, it can be anything. It can be the data that you are sending. It could be Bitcoin data. It could be registration details of your land. It could be transaction details of whatever you do with blockchain. So all this content inside will be protected and how is what we are going to understand. The blockchain, whenever you are trying to make a change, it's not going to be so easy and straightforward. We need to get something added to the block or some changes needs to be done. It will be like this. So I have a new block to be added to the block, uh, to the entire blockchain. So it gets added to all of them and all of them have to say yes. Only when they give consensus, we call it, I made it so simple. There is a technology story behind it. When only when the uh, rest of the participants, rest of the nodes say yes, your block will get added. So it's not so easy for somebody to go ahead and get something added or get something removed from it. It's called consensus. So having conveyed about the fundamentals, this is all the fundamentals we have discussed enough on blockchain in the previous session. So it's better that we go into the core topic. I have told you the positives of the blockchain, right? There is a lot of threat options as well available. Some of them are very familiar to you already, but we are going to see the threat landscapes first. <clears throat> now, if you see, we need to first understand a point like uh, which blockchain are you going to use? Are you going to use a private blockchain or a public blockchain? So based on that, I can get you the understanding of what could be the threats. But sometimes, uh, I can call it most of the times, it will be like the threats will be common, but we need to understand the difference between private and public blockchain first. What is private blockchain? What is public blockchain? Let's take public. Public blockchain is very simple, very easy for anybody to join, very easy for anybody to perform core even activities. They can, they can go and perform adding modules, adding nodes to it, adding uh, participants to it, changing content from it. Anything can be done easily, and that is really public. It's like Ethereum. Ethereum, as you know, is a public blockchain and there the participation of you and me could be much more easier. But what is private blockchain? The private blockchain is exactly opposite to public blockchain where only selected participants will be allowed to peep in. Only they can go in and make changes. There will be an admin or an operator who will hold the complete control of the complete operations, whatever is going to happen. And there will be a controlled uh, access. There will be moderated access that could be given to the blockchain. So it will be safer. Uh, I can tell you an instance like JP Morgan, they have a private blockchain network. 
which actually is very helpful for simplifying, streamlining, and verifying transactions. So it's a private blockchain completely monitored by JP Morgan. Not you and me can enter into it. So it's only JP Morgan's customer who are validated can get into it. So based on private or public blockchain, some of the threats and attacks could be different. And today I'm sure that you guys must be aware of what's happening all around the world. Uh, the uh, lock 4J attack. Uh, that's something that's going to be very threatening and some solutions are coming from all the corners, but still uh, it's, a it's, it's a big threat that is also attacking blockchain. Uh, I was not able to include that in the VPT because it, it, was, it was a very recent attack and I need more facts and figures. So it's going, it has already attacked uh, cryptocurrencies based transactions, I understand from the uh, records that I read. So the attacks are coming from all the corners, even for blockchain. The blockchain uh, is still vulnerable. It's not 100% safe is what I try to convey. There are four common attacks that I would like to list one after another. The first one is phishing, second one is routing, third one is civil, and the fourth is 51% attack. <clears throat> well, uh, we'll start with uh, the phishing. What is it? Most of us know it, and it's very simple. Uh, phishing is nothing but whatever happens, whatever attack that can come through email is most commonly related as phishing. Uh, it is the simplest way any attacker can steal your data. Uh, you can give the bank credentials, you can give your credit card details or blockchain credentials are also stolen through this phishing. So uh, most of the time, the phishing appears very legit, I mean legitimate, and it will appear like trustworthy. So you will have to be careful. And the phishing email is really, really cautiously to be aware of. Um, it's very interesting to uh, understand the history of phishing. Uh, it was first coined by 1996 by the hackers themselves. So they started stealing the America online accounts and passwords, and uh, it's called phishing. They fish the passwords from the ocean of internet. That's why they call it. So uh, phishing is uh, even attacking blockchain. Hauser, very simple. I hold some credentials. I hold some confidential information with respect to blockchain. And I can leave that information to the attackers through the phishing attacks. So you have to be careful the moment you uh, get some sort of email, which is appearing not to be legitimate, you need to take 10 times, look into it, and then you can decide if it is a real phishing attack or is it a legit email. So it's simple, an attacker can crack your credentials within no time, and it's just not phishing. There are more types of uh, attacks available which are connected to phishing. You might not be aware of it, so it's good to know it. First is deceptive phishing. Uh, this will look like perfectly legitimate So I'm telling you, most of the cases where the deceptive phishing has happened, where the victims are saying, the reports are all clearly saying that the mail looked like exact legitimate email. There was no major difference. So whenever it was so deceptive, whenever it looks like original, uh, there will be a tendency to fall. So we have to be very careful when we are giving the confidential information. And even though we are very much aware of what is happening in the cyber world, many a times we also fall as prey. And this is suitable even for blockchain. So be careful about it. Second one is spare phishing. This is something very, very tricky because they play with trust. So I trust somebody very much. I have a contact in my mobile whom I'm talking to so frequently. I have a contact in my email chain, which I'm mailing so frequently. So that comes into my trust, trusted chain. So I will use their credentials and I will pull out the uh, blockchain credentials out of you by phishing you. This is a high level trust game that they are playing. This is called spare phishing and this is something very, very carefully to be handled because it comes from your most reliable resources and they are already compromised with that. Whaling, uh, this goes at the organization level. If whaling happens, that's all the organization is at a big trouble. So it will go at the enterprise level where the entire organization will be kind of compromised with a lot of details through this attack. So you have to be careful and this may not have happened in a lot of instances, but still this is listed as one of the common attacks. And wishing, and there is one more called as machine. So wishing is voice calls. So there are a lot of cases that we are hearing nowadays that they are taking credentials over phone because we do not have time to validate all those things. We are quickly giving the OTP also. And we have to be careful about it. They are taking de details from your phone as well through a simple phone call and simple SMS. It can take the complete data out of you. It can be a WhatsApp message. It can be an SMS. Whenever you get an eye-grabbing message, please do not uh, get fallen as a prey there. So it's going to be really, really very difficult eye grabbing messages are most attractive messages are the most deceptive ones which will trouble you. So we have to be careful. Blockchain even is a victim of all these attacks. Deceptive phishing, spare phishing, whaling, and importantly, wishing and smishing. So blockchain has not escaped out of it. There are cases where people have recorded that because of these attacks, they lost 
the uh, cryptocurrencies are they lost money and credentials are compromised as well the next one is routing attack uh, this is a very big very very big attack in the sense this will appear like not at all happening but it would have happened by then so uh, blockchain it's all about real time right you cannot really say that i will do it tomorrow blockchain is nothing uh, i mean you cannot postpone operations in blockchain it's all completely real time <clears throat> if i have to call it right uh, it's operations which have to be done on time every time perfectly uh, in fact in time is preferred most of the times as well because it's all going to be transverse large data transfers most of the time it's money and you will have to be careful now what happens is hackers are very active most of the time like what is happening even now uh, about the log 4j whatever i told you they are very active and they intercept the data and they intercept the data through isp that's the uh, isp is internal service provider so what happens is they also hijack the ip prefixes or they can drop connections so what will happen if they drop the connections what's the big deal i am waiting for consensus from your end i am adding a node there has to be five nodes which has to give me consensus only two nodes have given me consensus and rest of the three nodes did not give because of the attackers or the hackers stopping it what will happen the transaction will not go complete the problem is the transaction will not be complete there and it would cause a delay or it would cause loss of money as well as trust so whatever we are thinking as the best thing the consensus is the best thing that's going to safeguard the blockchain but if it is delayed and if it is going to trouble you how good are we without blockchain that's a question that we need to answer the participants would never get to know that there has been there has been an attack that's a worst point about it because routing attacks appear like very normal things and it will happen in the background and you will have to wait wait and wait it's like you waiting for a train and the train will never come because it has been attacked as simple as that so the data or currencies would have been looted already much much before you could predict they could have looted the data and uh, the routers are like very honest guys they they are too good they trust their neighbors uh, if you have some amount of networking experience if you have some amount of networking knowledge you would definitely agree to the point they believe their neighbors they trust their neighbors but all the time neighbors may not be good so if they lie if the neighbors are compromised the routers will be deceived to take a different path so the neighbors can let the router go in a different direction and the routing can be ultimately changed it can lead to hijacking or it can lead to delay in consensus as i told you and many a times the routing attacks are appearing to be accidental but it's actually intentional there are a lot of records and reports which i read through before i uh, prepared this presentation which reveals the matter of fact that it appears initially like a non intentional attack but end of the day it is actually intentional so we have to be careful about it but stopping is either not easy so there are methods which are working out with them which are being worked out on getting a 100% solution for this civil attack is a next attack which we need to know uh, civil is a very dangerous attack this this attack has already spoiled multiple blockchain networks and uh, the reports are really threatening uh, what what do the uh, attackers or the hackers do here it's very simple they create multiple falsified identities what do you mean by that sir very simple there is one node but they will create multiple fake nodes appear and it will appear like there are multiple fake nodes and what will happen then it will flood the system it will it will be like flooding the network with these civil nodes which are actually the fake nodes the moment we have a lot of nodes then what we can really handle the system will tend to crash this is really really very dangerous so why did the name sibyl came the sibyl darset was the woman who was first affected by multiple personality disorder and uh, this is this is how the sibyl node behave so there will be multiple nodes which will come in which will keep popping up the count of the nodes will suddenly get increased decreased and there will be a, a definite a definite disorder in the total network so they connected it to that particular multiple personality disorder person and they named it that way with the sibyl attacks it will be very easy for the hackers because uh what happens is the 51% policy is there right when i told you uh, when i when i spoke about the consensus if 51% and above uh, in the network if they agree for a transaction that becomes legal and that can enter in so i have 10 people in the network and six people are accepting my transaction that's all it's all over it's possible what will happen with this civil attack is these guys these fake nodes what they will do they will gain control over the honest nodes and they can appear as if they are the they are the uh, legitimate nodes and they can decide or they can delay or they can reject the legitimate operations so this can certainly block the entire blockchain and that could be a nightmare 
so it's, it's not so easy for somebody to counter uh, uh, the civil attacks because they appear so legitimate i can decide as in which operation to be blocked which operation to be allowed which operation to be hold on which operation to be held on all these things we can decide because we have fake number of nodes which is actually the majority number of nodes if you see in this i have got say around 4 plus 3 7 and totally if i have 51% seven is more than 51% i can take over the control of entire network so it's going to be completely with me and civil attacks are real night maps and 51% attack <clears throat> this is what i have been talking about all this time this is one factor this is one factor which really makes blockchain very secure right decentralization and consensus these two are making blockchain really safe correct but is it really safe Yes, we have a question that we need to ask. All the participants are same in front of blockchain. This is like in front of God. We are all same in front of the God. So that's the same story for blockchain. Everybody should follow rule. Yes, it's all framed properly. If it is to work properly, yeah, it has to. It, it is to work properly by as per rule. But is it the way that is going on? That's that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. So there are a lot of attacks which can really trouble this consensus as well. now if you see there could be a malicious miner who can come into picture who can start injecting fake nodes this is called the malicious nodes they can start injecting nodes which are never which are never part of the entire chain earlier so when it comes to traditional blockchain one can get a new token or a coin and the miners find solution for the hashing problem what i mean is very simple i have to add something so i need to solve a problem it's a complex problem i'll get a solution for it i need to push it on to the network it has to be validated this is how i can add something to it this is how i can be part of it but this is not actually going to be that way where attackers start injecting fake nodes attackers start injecting malicious content inside and these blocks are never getting approved by rest of the people so what happens is this 51% pool is getting broken there so this is what i have been telling about for a long time they can rewrite the transactions they can revoke transactions they can stop transactions they can even lead to something called as double spending which is all very very dangerous so the 51% attack is something that all the researchers are working on to see what kind of solutions can come research challenges with blockchain are really plenty uh, i am heading towards my final part of the discussion i made it so quick i believe Uh, if you have any questions please type it in the chat box by the time i complete the session i can answer them <clears throat> there are multiple challenges that are uh, connected to blockchain if you want to do a research in blockchain if you want to build solutions around blockchain where are the things that you can really go and start concentrating on the first thing that i would like to tell you is blockchain is still infant what do you mean sir very simple it's just 10 years old uh, it will grow it will grow it will have to grow there is no option but still it is infant and multiple technology uh, difficulties are spotted multiple technology difficulties still have no answer with respect to blockchain but there are solutions which are expected in the near future it can be with respect to integration it can be with respect to consensus storage and scalability the regulation and even governance first the point need to be understood is integration what do you mean by that blockchain is not one blockchain is not just one technical i'll install a software and can i use blockchain no it's not that it's multiple technologies that are going to come together you need to acquire record store data you need to store data you need to acquire data all in real time so it has to be done in a safer way as well and you need more amount of computing power than what you have really in hand today you may have to know new scripting languages and new tools for example you may have to know node red when you have to build solutions you may have to know new new languages which which may have to be really learned new from your side so it's a challenge so it is not very straight forward you have to integrate multiple technologies coming together to establish a complete blockchain setup whatever we have been doing is at a very preliminary level when you have to go at the implementation stage you may have to really learn a lot of things well the second issue or a threat or the research challenge is the consensus this is actually so strong but yet so demanding why sir very simple when i have to go with consensus i need lot of computing power i need to solve a math problem which is very complex and i need to get a solution i need to post it across and multiple miners could be solving the problems parallelly so it's a real challenge so you need a lot of computing power and also what happens is because we have consensus i send a node it gets attached to everything and everybody has to approve and 51% rule has to be passed all these things coming into picture 
what happens is this increases the latency and reduces the throughput throughput is what you expect whenever you have a real time system i need throughput i need decreased latency but on a contrary it is actually opposite to that and we uh, get a uh, reduced increased throughput at the same time i mean reduced throughput and increased latency is what is happening here and most important problem uh, so whenever i uh, build any blockchain applications i need to first see my compatibility of the existing systems you may not really find it very compatible so whatever systems you have it might not go hand in hand with the uh, existing systems when you uh, want to install or you want to set up blockchain so that's a major challenge scalability this is a major issue uh, issue or rather you can call it a challenge each node will have the backup of the data that's what i told you whenever i add something everything is getting added to each of the, the nodes and that's how the backup happens and that's distributed right so it's not very easy why the data could be minimal today the data could become better tomorrow it could be maximum day after tomorrow it could be very big data after couple of, after few days so it is not really feasible for somebody to hold a lot of data with the existing infrastructure sir i will store it in cloud it will also cost you sir i will store it locally you may not be able to do as much when you when you have the data crossing the limits so it's very difficult also how long can i retain the data when i talk about data i need to also tell you how long will the data be owned by me so that's not a certain answer that i can give you immediately so there is there is no rule which says that after this much time you can remove the data in blockchain no it cannot happen so this is a non realistic as of now and this has to be answered and <clears throat> finally when you talk about laws and regulations multiple countries have accepted blockchain as okay this is a full proof technology which can be taken into a governance which can be taken into uh, implementation in all the states multiple countries have accepted that but there are many countries which are yet to even legalize it which are yet to even accept it which has not happened as as rapidly as expected uh in india also blockchain is not legally accepted for all financial transactions i believe so there are multiple things which are happening all around the world with respect to governmental sectors that could be a strong set of rules and regulations which are to be framed to enable uh, transparent transactions which is actually going to be good everything coming into blockchain is a good thing but do we have sufficient amount of time for migration uh, do we have sufficient amount of uh, implementation facilities is it completely full proof that all the governmental data all the sensitive data can all move in into blockchain yes that's all the question that we need to answer right and the most important uh, thing is uh, a very important thing that we need to go ahead with is uh, please visit the government of india website blockchain.gov.in to understand how government of india is adopting blockchain right so this is a very great website that uh, i was literally impressed with this website because Uh, they have done a lot of work on where and all this blockchain can go and how blockchain can be really adapted. All those things have really uh, happened nice with respect to government of India's uh, vision, right? So uh, please have a look at it whenever you are free, and this is going to be amazing. Actually, you will definitely love it. Government of India has adapted multiple things, but particularly Goa. Uh, Goa as a state government has done a lot of stuff with respect to blockchain. So you can have a look at it and you can understand much more things. Welcome to the world of blockchain. it's going to be much challenging much rewarding as well as interesting i hope i did not bore you guys thank you very much for finding joining me this evening today